When Ace Frehley joined KISS, he was using a red Epiphone coronet. Epiphone recently started making this model again. I'm tempted to get one just for the loose KISS connection. He quickly moved on to a white Ovation breadwinner. Ovation is mostly known for their very cool acoustic guitars. This was their first foray into electric guitars. Ace recorded the first KISS album with this guitar. When KISS was signed to Casablanca, Ace bought a Tobacco Sunburst Les Paul Deluxe. The stock model would have come with many humbuckers. However, Ace bought his used and a previous owner had changed it to full-size humbuckers. Like Paul Stanley, Ace used DiMarzio pickups favoring the bridge pickup almost exclusively. He prefers a Super Distortion specifically, but also uses PAFs. This guitar became Ace's main guitar and remained that until 1976. Ace had the idea for a smoking guitar very early on, but it would mess with the electronics of the guitar. So he bought a second Tobacco Sunburst Les Paul Deluxe, and this became his smoking guitar. Ace had a variety of backups in the early years, but none were used extensively. He really liked his Les Paul Deluxe. One of the weirder ones was a Valino, a guitar made out of aluminum. This saw very little use. Around the time of Hotter Than Hell, Ace got another Les Paul in a natural finish. According to AceFraleyLesPaul.com, Ace would later refinish this guitar black and add a middle pickup. In the Paul episode, I attributed this guitar to him as there are pictures of him playing it. But it looks like it may have been Ace's all along, and this is the guitar he is holding on the cover of Alive. Before the Alive tour, Ace acquired a black Les Paul Custom. Paul actually had a matching one that I briefly mentioned in his episode. This guitar served as a backup. Another backup was a Travis Bean model, the TBS 1000S, which Ace started using during the Alive tour. Towards the beginning of the Destroyer tour, Paul gave Ace his Ibanez Destroyer, a copy of a Gibson Explorer. Ace must have liked it because he used it quite a bit during that tour along with his Deluxes. Interestingly, for a couple of promotional appearances, Ace used a Gibson Explorer. Due to the sponsorship deal they had at the time, Gibson probably would not have been happy with Kiss using Gibson copies on television. Ace must not have liked the Explorer as much as the Destroyer, seeing as which one saw more stage action. In time for the Rock and Roll Over tour, Ace debuted what is his most iconic guitar, a Les Paul Custom in Cherry Sunburst. Ace added the middle pickup to the guitar because he likes the look of a three pickup Les Paul. Ace retired his original Deluxe at this point. In 1977, he had it converted to a double cut and painted it black. The smoking Deluxe remained for Ace's solo. In early 77, Ace adjusted his black custom by kind of adding a middle pickup. Because he only plays the bridge pickup, he doesn't actually need the middle pickup installed. So instead of drilling into the guitar, he essentially glued the middle pickup onto the guitar. During the Japanese leg of the Rock and Roll Over tour, Ace briefly used a Greco as Paul had done. Ace's was a Cherry Sunburst double cut. For the Love Gun tour, the Cherry Sunburst remained the main guitar, with the Black Custom serving as a backup. A modified Tobacco Sunburst Les Paul standard took over smoking duties. The Alive 2 tour saw little change outside of Ace removing pit guards and putting them back on. The exception was in Japan when, again, Ace used a Greco, this time a flying V called an AK-1400. I don't know if Ace likes Vs or not, but he looks damn cool with one. Dynasty saw a change in Ace's arsenal. The Black Custom became the main guitar, with the Cherry Sunburst Custom moving to the backup role over the course of the tour. Ace acquired two more Black Customs, one to be the new smoking guitar, and the other to be used for a new effect, shooting rockets. Steve Carr, who made Paul's star guitar and the initial design for Gene Simmons's axe, made the flasher out of a Gibson Les Paul Jr. It's called that due to a flashing light in time with the song. John Robinson designed the electronics, Mary Robinson did the assembly, Jim Botton did the mechanical engineering, and Carr made it a workable instrument. Ace used the guitar exclusively for New York Groove. By the time of the Unmasked tour, the Black Custom had become the definitive main, with the Cherry Sunburst Custom in the backup role. The Smoker, Rocket, and Flasher guitars all remained in their roles from the previous tour. The only addition was a Mini Explorer made by Carr. This was used exclusively for Talk To Me, which required an open G tuning. For the promotional appearances for The Elder, Ace used his Black Custom and the Mini Carr Explorer. The Cherry Sunburst was used for the Creatures of the Night promos. Ace's solo career saw little changes in guitars, and this series is meant to focus on the Kiss years anyway, but I did want to mention his Washburn signature model. Called the AF-40, this guitar debuted with Fraley's Comet and can be seen in the Into the Night music video. It saw little use because Ace didn't think it sounded that good. 
The Reunion Tour initially saw Ace using his Cherry Sunburst Custom as his main, and a second Cherry Sunburst as the smoking guitar. A black custom was the rocket guitar, and then the flasher was used when New York Groove was performed. The coolest, at least to me, is that Ace used a Cherry Sunburst Gibson Double Neck, the only one I've ever seen, for rock bottom. In 1997, Ace and Gibson unveiled a signature series for Ace. Based on his Cherry Sunburst Custom, it featured lightning bolt inlays and Ace's makeup clad face on the headstock. This became Ace's main guitar for the rest of his time in KISS. He had different ones for different parts of the show. The Smoker, The Rocket, and an open G-tuned one when Talk To Me returned to the set in 2001. For the Psycho Circus tour, Ace started using a silver Les Paul during Rock and Roll All Night. The guitar had discs all around the edge that would light up. By the time of the Farewell tour, Ace had added a twirly firework effect to the guitar. In the 2000s, Ace started using a Blue Burst Silver Sparkle Les Paul. There were three versions of this. The first was one of Ace's initial 97 Gibson models refinished. The second was a new one with slightly different lightning bolt inlays and the anomaly cover on the headstock. The third was a Les Paul Custom, likely one of Ace's old smoking guitars, refinished as seen in the Fire and Water music video. In 2011, Gibson produced a limited run called the Budokan, based on Ace's Cherry Sunburst Custom. Ace claims that Gibson is currently working on a new signature line to reproduce his Black Custom, which he refers to as Black Beauty. That concludes the Ace episode. I would like to thank AceFraleyLesPaul.com and Axology.com. Those are my main sources. Next week, there will not be a new episode of Guitar History. I will be making a Star Wars video for May 4th instead, but the series will return the week after with a video for Vinnie Vincent and Mark St. John.